Hey there kids, um, welcome to another, another math video. This is module four. Hip hip hooray, made it to a new module. And this is for lesson one homework. And so in lesson one, we're talking about line plots. And uh, the objective still is talking about measuring pencil lengths. And that's what you should have done in the problem set. So you should already have a little bit of practice using a line plot measuring pencil lengths in class. Maybe you guys did something else in your class. Um, but anyway, using the line plot just gathers data so that you can compare data. And so here on the homework, it's actually really easy and fun and fast. Uh, what we're doing is, let me just read this and then we'll talk about it briefly. A meteorologist set up rain gauges at various locations around a city and recorded the rainfall amounts in the table below. Use the data in the table to create a line plot using 1 8 inches. And so here's the number line that they want you to work on. And we have to use 1 8 inches as our like minimum amount of tick marks in between our holes. So one hole would be 8 8 And so we're going to make all those eighths on our line plot. So anyway, um, we have all these different locations that are listed by number and then we have the rainfall amounts and so when we put this data onto the line plot you can start to see patterns so uh, back to the line plot if I examine the data and I have to put the data on here in eighths I have to know what, what my minimum value is and my maximum value so I can see that I have 1 8 and of course I'm just going to divide this right in the middle and this is going to be my 0 and this will be 1 and this is going to be 2. Now how did I decide to do 2? Because when I look at my data I see that I have a number greater than 1. So I know I have to have 8 8 over here but I also have to have more than 1. So my next between 1 and 2 also has to be divided into 8 pieces. So do that now if you haven't done it already. You should have already done your homework, so you should just be checking it against the answers, which I will give you momentarily. Okay, so now that you have 8 eighths for each hole, now you're going to start putting your X's on your line plot. So starting out with location 1, if I have my rainfall amount in inches, I will put location 1 at 1 eighth. So where is 1 eighth? Well, each of these tick marks represents 1 eighth. So this would be 1 plus 1, which is 2, and then 3 eighths, and so on, knowing that 4 eighths is also equal to 1 half, but you don't have to have all the equivalent fractions. Just list a few, and you can even skip and do every other. You don't have to label them all. It just gives you a nice start. And more data is in this section than in this section. So if you do label them all, do it here. So if I have 1 8 what you want to do is you want to go find 1 8 and put an X above it. Okay, I plotted that one. Now I have 3 8 and I have one location that has 3 8 And then I go to location 3 and I have 3 4 And you go, oh man, my chart is in 8 Okay. That's okay. Make an equivalent fraction out of all of these so that any denominator that is not 8, you can easily turn it into 8. Use a scale factor. How do I get from 4 to 8? I multiply by 2. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 3 is 6. So you're going to take your location 3 and put this on your line plot at 6 eighths, which is equivalent to 3 fourths. This is the location for uh, location three. This is the location of the X for the uh, rain gauge at location three. Okay, now that one is plotted. We have another one at three fourths. Okay, so there are two at six eighths. Put your equivalent so you know what you're looking at and you should have two X's there now. How about one fourth? How many eighths would that be? Scale factor is two. 2 times 1, 2. Go to the 2 eighths, which is empty on top, not for long, and we put our second one at 6 eighths already. I forgot to check that off, and now we have one at 2 eighths. Okay, so every time you plot it, 
check it off or don't slash it because we have to do a little bit of work in the future but just check it off so you know you put it up there because these don't have numbers by them it's just an x kind of hard to keep track if you uh, forget where you are I also need eighths for my one-fourth, but I know that one-fourth is equal to two-eighths. It's not just two-eighths, though. It's one and two-eighths. Moving over to here, this is one and one-eighth. So this is one and two-eighths. So my x for this one goes here. Okay, so you should have an X at the second tick mark past your 1. Back to the 1 eighth. I have another one down here. 1 fourth, which we already know is 2 eighths. So we're going to have another tick mark at 2 eighths. Or an X, my bad. And then we have 1, which is equal to 8 eighths. Not that you have to know that for this. You should just know it for life. It's a good life uh, skill. And then we have one more at 1 eighth. I think we have a winner. Okay, so now we have some data, and this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to collect data and look at it so that if I didn't know the numbers or if my numbers were all different, then I can see oh, I had a lot of whatever this was. I had a little bit of this too and this too, but the other numbers were less relevant. So uh, regardless of what the number line is counting by, you can start to see patterns in your data. Now we go into the questions. Which location received the most rainfall? Now, they're not talking about location here. They're talking about location here, okay? And so then you have to go to the location and say, which is the greatest number? Now that one stands out pretty easily because one and one fourth has a whole number and none of the other ones do. And none of the other fractions are improper. So this one, location six, is the most rainfall. Then which location received the least? Well, nothing has zero. So above zero, we have three locations. So they should really say location or locations in order to be accurate, but we're gonna go with all of the places where one eighth was measured. And there are three of them, so it's gonna be location one, seven, and 10. And those three all received the same amount, which was the least. And then which rainfall measurement was the most frequent? Now this is what line plots often talk about is frequency and the things that, that start to develop the pattern. And so the frequency or pattern building is like, where are all the X's? Where are the second most uh, amounts of X's? And so that one stands out as being 1 eighth. And so that's the measurement that you would then answer for C. Now for D, what is the total rainfall in inches? That's right, you get to add these all up. So um, often on tests, they will say write an expression to show what you're doing. So you should write every single thing down from each location. And what I would do is since you have already, hopefully, found a common denominator, I would use the common denominator or the equivalent fractions for the ones uh, that had something different than eight to start. And make sure you get each one. And then for the whole numbers, I would just use that. I wouldn't use 8 eighths because we don't want to have to add anything. And then have your final one. Okay, so you should have uh, 10 pieces of data because there are 10 locations. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Double check. If you left something out, go back and see which one you left off. And then we're almost done. And don't forget to click to subscribe and come back because I love to help you on math videos. Um, but this is the last thing to do. And right here, it's really up to you how you decide to add them. You can try to make a lot of 8 eighths and move things around, or you can just add left to right. You can add them all up in one and put the two whole numbers together and have an improper fraction and straighten it out. 
I don't like to do that. I like to do small chunks. You could totally do it whatever way you want. But what I noticed um, when I was looking at this, if you can get something that can make an improper fraction, like say 16, so if you have six, seven, eight, nine, 10 plus six, these four fractions here make 16 eighths. And 16 eighths is equal to two. That's a whole number. So this whole thing here moves down so that I end up with only two. So I could rewrite and then have something much simpler. So you can look for little chunks in data. Also, let's take these two. If I have a whole number, let's put that aside for a second, and I have two plus two, I get four eighths. That's equal to a half. I know that rule one, Mrs. Setness is rule one, look for doubles. So four eighths, if I have that for those two fractions, I'm gonna end up with a half. Okay, so now those two are added. Now that leaves me over here where I have another whole number with two, three, four again, and four eighths again is equal to a half. So what I've done is I have used my mental math skills to simplify my addition problem so that when I put my numbers together, it's easier for me. So two, three, four, plus the half and the half make one, and that is five, and that's five inches of rainfall. That is your total answer for that problem. So see, not too bad just collecting data and looking at it. And I hope this video is helpful and we will see you on the next one. Bye for now.